This morning um, I wanted to talk about contemplating the elements, using the elements as a meditation object. This is part of the contemplation of the body. When we talk about using the body as a meditation object, one of the barriers to doing this, to getting any real depth, is that we have a very strong concept of the body and this concept gets in the way and often what we're using as a meditation object is more the concept of the body than the actual body, the actual experience of the body. So the contemplation of the elements is a way of cutting through that and getting to the direct contact with the body. First of all this this notion of the, the concept of the body and how we get stuck in that concept. Uh, we get stuck in it in the, in the most normal everyday way. So for example, if I say what's this? Then what would be the answer? The hand? <laughs> That's what it means. But what it is is a hand. What's this? Hand and fist. So these are the normal everyday ways that we think the body is. And we, f we lose sight of the fact that it's just a concept. It's not actually a direct experience. So we'll test this out with a little meditation exercise. What I want you to do is get into your meditation posture and hold out your dominant hand palm up. If you're right-handed it's the right hand, if you're left-handed it's the left hand. And just have it there quite relaxed and then settling into your, the meditation posture, close your eyes and just feel your hand and really put your attention onto it and really feel it. Just feeling what's there. And then begin to curl the fingers. and feeling what's there, really feeling the experience. Keep curling. When you come into the fist, just keep going and keep really feeling what the experience is. Okay. So, what did you experience? Hmm? Energy. What, what makes you think it's energy? What was the experience that made you think? Movement. movement. What else? Tingling. Tingling. Warmth. Warmth. Pulse. Pulse. Pulsing, yeah. Coolness. Hmm? Coolness. Coolness. Coolness, warmth, movement, tingling, pulsing. Softness. Softness. Tightness. Tightness. Anything else? Skin. Hmm? What was that? Skin. 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 How do you know it was skin? What was the experience that tells you this is skin? What, was it, what did you actually feel? Hmm. Or what does skin feel like? What was the feeling? What was the experience? Got that Okay, what did you feel? I just felt pulsing and heat. 
Okay. So the ear around the hand. Uh-huh. How did you know it was air? Feel the emptiness. So there's space. Uh-huh. We're so used to relating to the body through concept. And we bring this, this habit with us when we, we're doing the meditation practice. But the concept gets in the way of the actual experience. What we actually experience is heat, coolness, warmth, hardness, softness, movement, pulsing, space, and so on. And these are the elements. By elements we mean if you really start to look at physical experience, it starts to break down into discrete somethings which don't break down any further. It's like this is what it is. And for the body, the Buddha says there are four elements or what he calls the four great things or the four great appearances, the Mahabhuta, earth, air, fire and water. So this is, this is what body experience comes down to. Earth element is the experience of resistance from softness through to hardness. Air element is the experience of movement in all of its forms and support. So pressure, vibration, tingling, pulsing and so on and so forth are all manifestations of air element. Also lift, support, when we do the exercises in the morning and we lift up through the body, if you get a sense of that lift, what you're tuning into is air element. Fire element is the experience of temperature from cold to hot. Water element is the experience of liquidity and cohesion. So liquidity, wetness, dryness and cohesion, stickiness, slipperiness. So today we've got water element predominant. You can feel it in the air, the moisture in the air. Heat element is manifesting as it normally does. It's a bit cool, cool and damp. Heat element, water element are quite strong. These elements are a way of conceptualizing experience and they're still concepts, but that are directing us toward the actual experience as much as possible rather than I bring my hand down until it hits the floor, <coughs> it's an experience of movement and then resistance, which at first is soft, but as I keep pressing, it becomes hard. So I start to look at experience in terms of these elemental qualities and train myself to do it, to cut through the usual fabric of concept and to learn to look at experience with more detail. In a sense we can say that what the elements are what survive a degree of presence. When I'm present to something, that which is false evaporates. So when I'm really present to the experience of the body, my concept of the body, of my body, evaporates and what I'm left with are these physical sensations bouncing up and down. These are the elements, these are what survive a degree of presence. And what I'd like to do now is to go through an exercise where we quickly go through the elements and do a, a review of them. Any questions before we get started? All of the elements come mixed. If there's one element, there's all four. So pressure has an, has an earth aspect to it, of resistance, but it also has an air aspect of pushing and movement. So with pulsing, for example, that has, a, has an earth quality to it. It's hard, pull, hard, soft, hard. But the movement aspect is the air element. If you're just touching, it's yeah, oh yeah, then that is predominantly earth. When you just touch something, and you can you get that contact. But according to the theory, all of all the four elements come wrapped in a package. If there's one, there's all four. 
but one of them will be predominant at any one moment. But again, don't get caught up with the, uh, with the concept of the elements. Just use, and this is where the labelling comes in, look at the experience and or name it purely as it presents. So not earth element, but hardness, pulsing, touch, whatever. We have to use concept to some degree. But use a concept which is as close as possible to the actual direct experience. Is this making sense? So should, we, should we be thinking of the elements or should we be thinking of the components? The components. The elements are just a concept, another conceptual framework. They're, they're a bit more close to the reality than my body. But they're still just a conceptual framework. Even movement is a concept, but at least it's very close to the actual experience. So when we use the naming, we choose a name that gets as close as possible to the actual experience. If it's a name, it's a concept. Like, how do you escape concept? But as close as possible to the actual experience. Okay, shall we try the exercise? If you get into the meditation posture. <coughs> constructing the posture from the ground up. Feeling the body. Bringing the awareness to the whole body and feeling the whole body. And from there, turn your attention to those parts of the body where you feel hardness. Where do you feel hardness? You might find it in the lower part of the body, in the contact with the floor or the cushion or the chair. You might find it somewhere else but focus in on the experience of hardness and name it hard, hard. And now turn your attention to those parts of the body where you feel softness. Where do you feel softness? Find softness and name it. Soft, soft.
Now bring your awareness back to the whole body, opening up and feeling the whole body. And from there, turn your attention to those parts of the body where you feel heat or warmth. Search for heat or warmth. And if you find it, focus in on it and name it. Heat or warmth. And now turn your attention to those parts of the body where you feel cold or coolness. Where do you feel cold or coolness? Focus in on it and name it. Cool. Cold. Now again, open up to the whole body. Bring the awareness out, expand it out, feeling the whole body. And from there, focus in on those areas of the body where you feel wetness. Where do you feel wetness? Find wetness and name it. Wet, wet.
and now turn your attention to dryness the experience of dryness where do you find dryness find it focus in on it and name it dry dry Now again, open up to the whole body, feeling the whole body. And from there, focus in on those parts of the body where you feel movement. Where do you find movement? Focus in on that experience and name it. Movement, movement. And now turn your attention to the experience of lift or support. Where do you find lift or sense of support? Focus in on it and name it. And again, open up to the whole body, just feeling the whole body. And open up to all of the elements. Just staying with whatever experience arises at the moment. Resting in the awareness of the whole body. 
not seeking to stay on any particular aspect but allowing all of the elements to dance and to flow. Just what is happening now without imposing any agenda. Okay, how did that go? What was the strongest, most obvious element? Coldness. Coldness. Mm -hmm. yeah. Movement. Movement. Where did you find it? Well, almost everywhere in my body. Mm. A lot of pulsing, a lot of uh, movement in your head. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I think I lost all the elements. I forgot the end. You lost them all? I could not experience any elements. Ah. Uh, what did you do with them? <laughs> 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 so what were you experiencing when they were all gone? I was feeling that some way uh, tightness on one side than the other. Right side was more tighter than the left side. Uh -huh. So it was mostly tightness? Was that the predominant? Um, yeah, I guess so. Hmm. Yeah, sometimes they don't turn up when you want them to. It's one of the fascinating things about meditation experience is that it's never on call. <laughs> it's always what happens at that time. The experience decides what it's going to be, not us. So whatever you focus on becomes predominant? Yeah. yeah. The mere act of focusing on something brings it out sometimes. So if you choose to focus on one thing, often you start to find it when you didn't notice it before. So it, it can bring it out. But what was the most obscure of the elements? Dry. Dryness. Mm. I usually find dryness right next to wetness. Lift, you didn't get, you didn't find lift. Lift, it can be really obscure. How many people did not get lift and support? No, most people, you got it? Sometimes people, it's like, with lift, it's like, what on earth is that? <laughs> it's quite, quite an interesting one. It's an aspect of our element. It's like the fact that we're sitting up and not collapsed is because of air element lifting us up. So it's just a question of, of tuning into it or not, as the case may be. Maybe I'm not just, just the feeling of texture of the body. 
Uh-huh. Yep. What you what you find like doing this is that certain aspects of experience are relatively strong, sometimes very strong, or or at least relatively strong. And you start to tune into, okay, what is it that I'm sensitive to? You find some elemental aspects you don't particularly get. You know, you either you don't get it at all, or it's very faint and you, it's it's not something you can really grab ho- hold of. Other things you find are really clear and obvious. The ones that are clear, they're the ones for your meditation object. You always go for what's clear, what's, what you're sensitive to. You always play to your strengths. You'll find that you, you, are, you will be sensitive to certain aspects of experience. So go for those. Use those a lot and make those your your basic point of reference. Don't worry, never worry about what is not being experienced, what you can't see. That's completely irrelevant. Just focus on what you do see, what you do experience. So usually the the two ones that that are most frequently called upon in meditation methods are air element, movement, and earth, hardness, softness. In other words, touch. So Certainly for me, they're the, they're the two obvious ones. The, the hardness at the base of the body, hardness, softness, because they always go together, and the sense of, of movement within the body. But you find that the, the meditation method uses those two a lot, uh, because for most people they're fairly obvious. But you always seek out what's obvious, what's apparent to you. What can you hook on to? Find what it is, what aspects of of here physical experience that you're sensitive to and use those, firstly. Secondly, be as precise as possible with the experience. Don't be just content with with a general sense of it, but try to be as precise and accurate as possible with the awareness and use the name to bring out that precision of awareness. So name it for how you feel it. So forget about the elements, but just name it for how you feel it. So for example, texture. You know, what it's, uh, if, if I was asked, okay, where do you put that in the four elements? I'd be groping, you know, <laughs> texture, I don't know. But the point is, that's what you feel. So that's what it is. It's like you be creative with the name. It's how you feel it. I often use the generic term touch because for me, I don't have to think about it and it's just, I can feel it in the body. The touch, the contact. So often I just, I'll just generically name it touch. And for me that works. But with the names, because you're bringing in a, a concept, use a concept that means something to you, that gives you the feel of what it is rather than using somebody else's concept. Well, if you if the experience is like diving, name it diving. Oh, okay. If that's what it feels like. See, you know, the, the purpose of the concept is to bring you to closer to an engagement with the reality. Mm-hmm. If you slap on an artificial label that comes out of a textbook that doesn't, basically doesn't mean anything to you, mm-hmm. it's, there's going to be a barrier between you and the experience. So you use something that feels right. Mm-hmm. How about that last one when you opened up to all the elements? How was that? Hmm. <coughs> Anyone else? It can be quite a nice one, that. Mm. Sometimes it's good to go wide with the awareness, to open up to everything. And it's like you, you, 
you step back with the awareness and just let everything move. Sometimes you go in and you be very precise. You go in, what's this, what's this, what's this, what's this? And often, as in this exercise, if you go in and look with detail and precision, then when you step back, there's a lot there. So the precision is very important. You can't be really detailed and precise all the time. I notice some people nodding off. It's still early in the retreat. When the mind's dull, you can't be precise. So you just do what you can do. But when you're fresh, when you're sharp, it's really useful to go in there and be really precise with the awareness. So not being content with just a, a general sense, but just being going really right in there and being quite precise with the awareness. And other times, step back, get a sense of the whole picture and just let it flow. And you go in or move out depending on conditions, depending on circumstances. So for example, if, if you're feeling a bit dull but you want to energise, then go in and be precise and move the point of awareness around because that energises the mind. It's hard work, but it wakes you up. At other times, if there's too much energy and it's gets spinning out of control, step back and just let the whole thing unfold in front of you. There's different ways of being aware. And part of the, of the skill of learning meditation is learning when to apply what strategy. Any questions? Ah, that's, yeah. that's an interesting question. Do, should you stay in one aspect or should you move around? Again, it, it depends on choice. Let's say you're, you're using breath as a meditation object. Well, there you're using air element. It's movement. And you're staying with it over a period of time, staying with the same thing. Because by staying with the same thing over a period of time, the mind can settle and get really, really focused. And similarly with other elements, let's say you start to get strong physical sensation in the body. Well, this is the elements getting strong. And so you might go there and stay there for a period of time. But at other times, you may uh, do something like what we've been doing there, of shifting the point of awareness around quite deliberately. Sometimes you do that, as I said, particularly if you start to feel dull and you need to wake up a bit. And if you, let's say you've been working with the breath and you're starting to it's hazy and you're starting to get dull, then often it's good to drop the breath because it becomes too soporific. First start with the whole body, the sense of the whole body, and name it sitting or body. And then zero in on, okay, what's the strongest sensation now? <coughs> Put the awareness on it. Come back. What's the strongest sensation now? Come back. Where is it now? And you could name it according to the elements, or you could just give it a generic um, name like touch. But you move the point of awareness around in a rhythm. This, this takes energy, it's hard work, and it can wake you up and make you really sharp. If you're doing that, rhythm is important. If it's too slow between the points of contact, then you fall asleep. If it's too fast, you get restless. So you find the right rhythm. And so you might do that for some time and then you feel you know, really clear and maybe the breathing's come back into, into view and then just return to the breathing. Sometimes you can have trouble finding the breath. Okay, switch into the elements and the breath will come. It'll, when you're not looking for it, it'll just pop up again. Then go back in. So you, you can play around. Mm -hmm. But then the breath is so quiet from the night. Mm. And then it, it's hard to know whether I've gone into a relaxed, empty space or almost gone back into that dreamlike quality of sleep. Mm. And so then maybe it's good to pinpoint the primary object a bit stronger. 
you know, to use something more, more apparent, more obvious. But one of the dangers of breathing meditation is that it's true that we do breathe ourselves to sleep, like when we go to bed. Breathing and relaxation are very closely linked, which is one of the reasons why it's a good meditation object. But it's also the disadvantage that we can have a very dull relationship with breathing as a meditation object. And sometimes that's fine if I just want to relax. But at other times it, it's not, it gets in the way. So the shifting to other elements can, can sharpen the mind, wake it up a bit. Mm. Yeah, dullness is can be quite bad because dullness is the lack of energy and you need energy to get out of it. Mm. Emphasizing posture is good, like straightening up. Opening the eyes is good, sitting with the eyes open. Shifting the point of awareness around, that's because that's really hard work when you're dull. And always going for what's obvious. Nothing subtle, but really obvious. And if all else fails, stand up, walk. If that doesn't work, um, go to bed. <laughs> but we'll talk more about dullness later on. If breathing is not suitable, then find other physical experiences that are suitable, that are more obvious and clear and sharp. Because some people do have a problematic relationship with breath as a meditation object. It just sends them to sleep. And there's no point in, in thrashing the proverbial dead horse. If it's not a good op meditation object, don't use it. Or just use it occasionally when it's strong and clear. But other times, stay with body sensation. Does the counting help? Pardon? Does the counting help? Um, yeah. Mm. Then somehow it um, counts down. Yeah. When you've got too much energy, it's a mistake to focus in on something. Because it's like you're bringing all of this energy into a small point. And if you've got an energy problem, it means, you know, in other words, there's restlessness, agitation then it means that the energy is out of control. It's broken through the banks. And if you try to focus in on something, you're trying to grab it and squeeze it into a small space. And of course, it'll just blow up. It'll just rebel. So with, when you've got lots of energy, you step back and give it space. So you make the whole body and even beyond the body Yeah, yeah. And then also the next sitting is easier. Yeah, yeah. Faster walking, and again going wide with the awareness in the fast walking. But opening up doesn't work? No. Um, uh, I don't know, maybe I, I, I started the counting. 
Well, if the counting works, it stick with the counting. But what what you're aiming for is to allow the energy to flow freely. The agitation comes when it's it, when it's hitting a barrier, and it can't get through. And that's when the agitation starts. It, it, I hit sometimes uh, very um, strong emotional um, memories. Mm -hmm. Mm. Now then maybe you need to work using the emotion itself as the meditation object. I, um, sometimes I ask myself if I start counting is it actually suppressing or, or, or I don't really know how to deal with it mm. I, or easily in the story. Mm. You have to talk about it in the interview. Sorry? We'll explore this in the interview. Okay, it's walking meditation time. <laughs>